In this chapter, we are going to see how to interact with different types of button using Selenium. So I'm going to use our same application, letcode.in, and here we are going to use this page called letcode.in slash buttons, and where we have like plenty of options. So I'm going to copy the URL first, and here I'm going to say driver dot get, and I'm going to pass the URL. Okay, and we are going to skip this as of now because it says like we have to click on this to go to the home page and we have to come back. That is driver navigation commands. We will see that in the next chapter. Okay, so here uh, let's go back. So here you can see get the x and y coordination. So if a, if you have a button and if you want to get the coordination, that means uh, like where the button is uh, placed. So what we can do is we can uh, get the location. We can query the location. Let us see how to do that. So I'm going to inspect as usual, and that's going to um, have a ID called position. So I'm just going to copy that. And here we are going to say it our dot find element by ID, and it's going to return me the web element, right? So I can use control to L to store that, and I'm going to name it like um, BTN one as of now. Okay. Now let's maximize this one, and here I'm going to say BTN one dot. Uh, we have a function called get location, not the position, get location. So get location is going to return us the location. Okay, so here I can say control to L and you can see the location is basically returning us the point. So let's try to print the point and let's see what it's going to give us. Okay, so I'm going to say sys out and I'm going to print the object. Okay, so the location. And once we are done with this, we'll also quit the driver so that we can save our memory. Now let's go and uh, run this. If you are learning, you don't have to use the driver dot quit very often because you have to say you have to see like what is happening in the browser. But I'm doing the recording continuously, so it might affect my RAM. So that is the reason I'm using the quit always. Okay, just a pre precaution. I don't want to dumb or slow my system. Okay. Okay, things apart, you can see that we got the location and that's going to be 56, 372. That, uh, that means uh, it is the location of that particular element. When we will use that, uh, I will show you in, in another lecture. Okay, uh, so we are done with the first one. Let's go and uh, see. So here it says like, what is the color of this button, right? So interesting. What is the color? The color is basically like kind of maroon, I think, or reddish, we can say. Uh, let's find it out. Okay, so I'm going to use the ID and let's store that. Okay, so... Of course, you should write before the quit, not after the quit. So let's have some spaces here. Okay. And uh, it's going to color and it's going to get the position. I can say like location. Okay. And here I'm going to say driver dot um, find element by ID, the value. And that's going to return me a web element. I can say like uh, uh, BTN2 maybe. And then based on the BTN2, to i'm going to use the get css uh, value okay and here we have to get the color get css value which is basically used to get all the css value how to identify for example if i click on this element and if i click on the styles you can see that um, it has a background color and that is the this color right so if i go and copy this one background color so that's going to return me a string okay i can name it like color okay and then i can print it out but you have to remember one thing this get CSS value, it's not going to return you the actual color. Rather, it will return the RGBA. RGBA in the sense uh, red, green, blue, and A stands for alpha, basically the transparency. Okay, alpha means transparency. Uh, for example, uh, if I click on this one, you can see that in the Chrome, we have uh, options like uh, if I click on this hex or if I click on this RGBA, you can see. Uh, it's 138, 77, 118, and 1, right? So let's see what we are going to get. So I'm going to right click and run as Java application. And uh, we got exactly the same, right? So we have 138, 77, uh, 1, 1, 8, and the transparency is basically 1. 1 in the sense, no transparency. Uh, if I make it as a 0, why I'm doing this? This is not the CSS. Anyway, just to make you understand, right? So here zero, and you can see we do not have anything because the transparency is zero. So if I make it five, you can see like high half transparency. Sorry, not half, uh, not five. It should be zero point five. So it's basically from zero to one. In that scale, it works. Okay. Okay. Anyway, so that's uh, different things. Okay. Um, 
let's go to the next test so here you can see we have to find the height and width okay let me close it up we have to find the height and width of this particular button okay so it says like how tall and fat i am uh, okay uh, let's go and find so we can use the let text path to get the id and here uh, we can say like width and height okay and so what is the spelling of height h e i yeah so driver dot uh, find element by id and that's going to return me web element from there i'm going to use the get um rect and so get rect will give you the height and the width i believe uh, so let's store that in a object called rect and rectangle is by the way an interface i think no it's a class okay so rectangle is a cla class and from the rect i can use the height to get the height and width to get the width okay also also we have a functions like get height and get width so i can say like get height to get the height and i can say rect dot get width to get the width okay and then i can just do the sys out so i can say like sys out uh height my tall <laughs> basically how tall i am Mm, that's going to be your height and then i'm going to say how fat i am so how fat i am that's going to be your width right so now let's go and check the height and i mean height and width or tall and fat of that particular button and that's going to be uh 40 comma so 40 inch tall not inch i'm sorry 40 pixels and 904 pixels of width okay so that's it pretty much done now let's go and check whether we have something else yes we have to check like confirm button is disabled so that is already we discussed in our previous chapter the in the chapter 5 uh, we have a function called is enabled right so we can check the same so let me show you that quickly um so i'm going to say driver dot find element by id and the id value is this and we are going to check is enabled okay we have three functions is enabled is selected is displayed we will understand the differences in later on stages as of now just we'll focus on the is enabled so if enable in the sense uh, it will get, return us the true um, i mean boolean true or false so we'll just check okay in this case what it should return you know the answer you can tell yourself i'm just going to execute and show you the answer false why false because of course we cannot do any interactions with that particular button because it is not clickable in that case we are getting false if it's clickable and if it's interactable then of course it should be true okay that's it cool we are done with this particular chapter uh, which chapter we are in we are in chapter uh, 6 now as usual we are going to do the framework for this as well okay so framework and this, of course we are going to create some reusable functions right so we are going to do the click actions basically so we have click actions right so if you want to click on any button or any element of course we need a click functions so let's go and write a functions for that okay so here i'm going to write um public void click and click on what click on a web element right so we are going to pass that uh, here I know we are not using this but we are just keep on writing definitely we will use it i will show you when we are going to do that okay and here i'm going to say element dot uh, click okay so the first one is done and uh, mostly we don't uh, use like this one like um we will check is enable that is fun but get rect or get css value maybe css values make sense so if you have to check the colors we can use that other than that we don't use all this pretty much uh, like um, mostly but maybe when there is a need we can add in our framework so i'll just go with the css value and that is pretty much uh, fine i believe okay as of now okay so it depends on the project requirement so we'll add later on now here i'm going to just say like um, uh, public string get uh, element color i'm going to say get element uh, color and then it's going to ask me which element so we'll pass like web element element 
and then we'll say the actual code that is element dot get CSS value. And here we're going to say uh, the property actually. The property is what? The property is basically um, this one, right? So background color. I can copy that and I can paste over here, not here, within the double quotes. And that's going to return me a string. So I can store here and then I can return that, right? So return CSS value, okay? That's it, pretty much done. Just in case if you want to add the log, we can say like log and uh, we can say the CSS value, okay? And uh, what we have within the log, we have within the log system dot printl. So I can say like uh, um, background color is, so I can just copy it here. Background color is this one, okay? Not equals, it should be plus, okay? Okay, fine. So we have added our logs. That's right. And here also we can say, say same thing. Like once we're done with the click action, I can say like log. And I can say like uh, the element is click. Okay, so pretty much done. We have written three functions in the chapter six. Let's move to the next. I mean, we have written two functions. Uh, that is pretty much cool for this chapter. Okay. So let's go to the next chapter.